from Reliance Stadium in Houston. It's a new tradition. It's the second annual Texas Bowl, and this year it's a backyard brawl between the TCU Horned Frogs from the Mountain West Conference in the white and purple, and the homestanding Houston Cougars, the Texas Bowl, presented by Radio Shack. The TCU Horned Frogs from the Mountain West Conference expected to be a contender this year, and they had some ups and downs, but they have come here ready to play against a team they know very well. Thanks so much for being with us. Brad Sham with Charles Davis and Mike Mayock, and in the Houston Cougars, we're going to see an explosive, high-voltage offensive team, and that Charles... ...getting it through, because it's... And Donnie Avery, who wears number two. When you talk about speed in a car, you're thinking zero to 60. But with these guys, it's zero to six, as in six points. Anthony Aldridge, over 1,500 yards rushing, including three games of over 200 yards on the ground this season. And Donnie Avery, prolific as a wide receiver, over 1,300 yards with 81 catches, and in one game, 346 receiving yards. They can definitely score in a hurry. Now, when you have that kind of offense, the other team's got to find a way to slow them down. Mike Mayock's going to tell us how TCU does that, and it's got to start up front. And, Brad, they play a 4-2-5, the premium being they're undersized but very quick front with two tremendous defensive ends on the edges. You look at the edge, you've got Chase Ortiz, eight sacks, three-time All-Mountain West Conference performer, relentless pursuit. The other guy, Tommy Blake, one of the highest-rated seniors in the country this year, missed five games due to personal off-field reasons. He ballooned from 255 to 295. He's back in the 270s right now. He needs to have a big game. And then sophomore Raphael Priest. This is the fastest frog of them all. He needs to lace up the track shoes to run vertically with Donnie Avery. These two teams have been in bowls in recent years, but Houston hasn't won one since 1980. There's a lot of bragging rights on the line, and we'll have the kickoff when we come back to Houston. We're uncompromising. We could brew coolers somewhere other than the Rockies, but we don't. We're persistent. Our beer's been made smooth with only Rocky Mountain water since 1873. We're set in our ways. We use only the best high country barley for that full flavored taste. We refuse to change. Sound like anybody you know? Coors, the banquet beer. In the NFL, the biggest games are decided by the smallest details. That's why Samsung imagined an LCD HD TV with 120 hertz, a true black screen, and twice the frames per second for exceptional motion clarity. We got it. Challenging. So you won't have to wait for further review to start the celebration. The decision is clear. Samsung, the official HD TV of the NFL. If you didn't watch NFL game day last Sunday night, here's what you missed. I got a feeling those starters are going to be in there for the entire game. They have balance offensively, defensively. Don't miss NFL Game Day, Sunday night at 11.30, only on NFL Network. The Houston Cougars running out onto the field at Reliance Stadium. And there's a good look at their record, 8-4 and four overall, 6-2 and two in Conference USA, second place in the West Division. But for the Cougars, a bit of a tumultuous month because they've had a coaching change since the end of November. And for more on that, we bring in the fourth member of our party, Kim Jones. Kim? Thank you, Brad. Yeah, let's talk about the coaches because we have quite a contrast on the sidelines tonight. For TCU, it's business as usual with Gary Patterson as head coach. For Houston, it's a different story. Art Bryles left the Cougars a month ago to become Baylor's head coach. He took his top two offensive assistants with him. Now Kevin Sumlin has been hired, but he's not here either. He's finishing up his work as Oklahoma's offensive coordinator in the Fiesta Bowl. That leaves interim head coach to Chris Thurman, the cornerbacks coach for the Cougars. There's a slew of Oklahoma, or excuse me, Houston assistance guys who don't know their coaching future beyond this game tonight. I just talked to Coach Thurman who told me this feels different, but it feels good. He's excited for this opportunity. And guys, I know you're looking forward to talking to Kevin Sumlin during our broadcast. 
Kim, we are. Thank you. And we'll we'll have Kevin Sumlin on the phone shortly. And there's a good look at the TCU sideline. Chris Thurman was asked if it was how, how do you how do you find your way in kind of leading these guys when nobody knows where they're going? And, and he looked at the question and he said, well, we're, we're coaches. That's what we do. And, you know, I grew up I was the son of a coach and, and you kind of understand that for college coaches and pro coaches moving and change is part of the overall program and you have to embrace change and for this Houston team Charles the way I look at it they had no control over it the players are the ones that are left to deal with the damages and how they deal with it really ultimately will go a long way to determining what happens tonight you're exactly right and what really happens for Houston is that they can down focus they're out of school you don't have to worry about that you rely on each other this is that time where that brotherhood comes into play and you don't worry about it beyond the fact your coach is gone. Chris Thurman's leading us. Let's go play a bowl game. Now, Gary Patterson, on the other hand, has uh, a team that uh, he was hoping would be this year's Boise State. And, Mike, they have had a year that's been really, he says in many ways, it's the hardest year he's ever had as a coach. And I think they've done a great job dealing with the adversity and the injuries they've had this season. I mean, you start with the fact that the preseason Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year, Aaron Brown, has been on and off the field for them out for this bowl game, out for the rest of the year after hurting a knee a few weeks ago. They've dealt with adversity this entire season. I think they might have done their best coaching job, Charles. Yeah, I agree with that, considering that they looked at themselves at four and four and thought, what are we going to do for the holidays? Well, for TCU, you play in a bowl game. And they made that they made that their number one focus. Forget the fact of being a BCS buster, that's gone. Let's get to a bowl game. And they won three out of their last four, and here they are. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh uh, they they were a team that had a, a scheduling quirk early in the year and they thought they were going to have a long gap after they played Texas they beat Baylor they lost to Texas they thought they were going to have a bye and they got stuck with a Thursday night game at Air Force which they came from ahead to lose well they were up 17 to 3 and as, as coach Patterson told us they ran out of gas a little bit their field goal kicker misses a short field goal in overtime and they lose a game they probably should have won they dominated for three and a half quarters so now they're both here and uh, they're both here to have a great experience and it's a big uh, game for these young men in the red because this is their backyard and for the TCU Horn Frogs, it's a big recruiting trip. They got a lot of the players on this team by playing in what was then the Houston Bowl two years ago. There's a good look at Drew Combs, who kicks off TCU, won the toss, and uh, they've deferred. So Houston's got Donnie Avery back. Oh, boy, can he run. But he's not the guy with it. It's Allridge with it. And he can run. <laughs> That's pretty good starting field position for the Houston Cougars, a kickoff return by Aldridge, and it will bring us right to Chase Keenum, all freshman team in Conference USA for the Houston Cougars, a redshirt freshman from the Dallas suburb of Richardson. And what I like about him are two things. He's the son of a high school coach, so he's a gym rat, number one. And number two, he keeps plays alive with his feet. He's, he's got tremendous feet, athleticism, likes to run the football both in the option game and in the pass game the kickoff return was 32 yards and the spread offense for Houston and a quick gain to number nine Perry McDaniel here's the offensive lineup for the Houston Cougars starting with the offensive line Kim's going to talk about that left tackle, Sebastian Vollmer from Germany, Seabass, and Aykroyd, the right tackle. He's an all-conference USA player. And then there's Aldridge and Shoemaker, the tight end, uh, and fullback. Hafner at a tight end as well. And we've talked about Avery, and you'll hear about Harvey, number one. But right now, you'll hear more about Aldridge. And, and Charles, one thing about this Houston offense that's different from some of the spread offenses you see around the country, they actually have packages with fullbacks and tight ends and short yardage running plays. Never mistake this offense for strictly a pass offense. They had back-to-back -back games this year where they ran the ball for over 300 yards. So a lot of people hear about them running it and spreading it out and throwing it. They will run the ball also often. And they'll run it to Ganaway and apparently not enough for the first down. 
what they do on third and short is they go quick count with an unbalanced line. TCU was ready for it. They shifted their defensive linemen to the unbalanced side and stopped the play. Now look, it's fourth and short. Look at the quarterback up over the ball. This is this is a you got to be careful here. This is, this is Houston's mo. Yep, they like to be aggressive, like to go for it on fourth down. Not a surprise. Allridge behind Keenum on fourth and one, and a terrific play in the flat to break up the little quick screen made by Chase Ortiz, the All Mountain West Conference defensive end. Mike, I've got to ask this question: How do you not shot block Chase Ortiz on this play, knowing you're going to throw a quick pass? The there? right tackle, Aykroyd, who is an All Conference player, looked confused. He looked inside to his left. You got to chop his knees so his hands come down. That's a huge play by Ortiz and a bust by Aykroyd. And as we continue with tonight's starting lineups presented by Radio Shack, a good look at Andy Dalton from Katy, the Houston suburb. He's one of the ones who decided to come to TCU because he was able to see them here and in practice two years ago. And they start at their own 49. Well, no, they won't either. <laughs> Tight end jump. It's a bowl game. He's excited. <laughs> It's a Big Ten officiating crew. Offense, number 86, five yards. The down remains first. Shea Reagan, the tight end, was the player in motion, and the referee, David Whitboat. Another offense fourth there. Mike Schultz said he wanted to get the tight end more involved in the offense. <laughs> I don't think that was the way he had in mind. Like, he was involved. Shane said, I'm going to be involved. It's first and 15. Look out. Dalton just barely got rid of that and a gain on the play of 10 yards and now the defense of the offense of TCU presented by Radio Shack and Newhouse, Lindner, Schluter, Montgomery and Richmond up front. Schluter's probably the best player there. Turner, the tailback, we saw Shea Reagan kind of gets the other tight end. Bryant, the other wide receiver, so it's second down at about four. Christian. Not an ecumenical remark. It's Ryan Christian, the tailback, and now the defense of Houston. And again, tonight's starting lineups presented by Radio Shack. And the Houston Cougars will bring out Pre actually playing on the nose with Stewart and uh, Philip Hunt. Miller, Lubajowski, Allen, and Fahulu. And Fahulu will rush the passer. Williams and Simon on the corner spot had an all-conference player at strong safety. And this is the tailback, Joseph Turner, for a couple. Turner took over for Aaron Brown, who was the starting tailback and a preseason all Mountain West projection. He was injured in the first game, struggled through for a while, and then suffered another injury, and they really missed him. So a nice run by Turner on second down, sets him up with third and makeable. The runs that we're seeing early from TCU are not exotic, super, you know, hipper dipper type plays they're your basic runs but they're coming from so many different sets and formations every snap is a different personnel grouping going into the game for tcu they're giving you different formations different looks they're trying to out leverage houston and getting them moving in one direction and hit them coming back the other way and that's what turner is he's a one cut runner at 225 pounds third and three first down and more for Jeremy Curley, but there's a marker. And that was kind of like stealing on third and short. He was the inside receiver of trips, just ran a quick out. You've got to get up and press that defensively. You also have to keep people from getting down the field before they're supposed to. And that was the penalty that was called, an ineligible man downfield. So the first down run on the reception by Curley 
is negated. And, and, that, and that's something that you rarely see on that type on of that a pass type play, of play, right? I mean, normally what you're seeing an ineligible man, a screen or a scramble, or a scramble where guys move around and guys lose sight of where they are. On a quick, quick snap, quick three step drop. Ball. How did someone get downfield? That, that's bad. So now it'll be third down and eight. Nobody in the middle of the field for Houston. Now they're going too deep. And the quarterback, Andy Dalton, may have gotten closer to field goal range. Now the Cougars thought the ball came out. And, and that's really close. That could be reviewable. I thought, I thought they were, I, I thought the referee had his arm going in the opposite direction. Okay, he just had an arm up. But look at the coverage downfield, Mike. That looked like you called too deep, and I'm exactly with you. Look like too deep, five I, man under. I think and he they fumbled, were all over. He might have fumbled the football, and I have a feeling we're going to get a review from up top. Now, remember, in college football, it's not typically you get one call from the sideline from the coach. Everything's reviewable up, up top. Fontenet, number 28, made a great hit on the football. I'm betting. If I'm TCU, I'm getting to the line and getting moving now. Even on fourth down, it looks like they're going to go for it. It might be a short punt. Short punt. Yeah. yeah, they got by. Oh, no, somebody moved. Yeah, that was a quick pick formation with Dalton who could pooch it. Now they're just going to go regular punt with a five-yard penalty in yep. the yep. See if he, th if he says that Shea Reagan, the tight end, was in motion again. False start. 86 offense. Uh, Five yards. That's two for Reagan. Remains. You know, since that call did not get changed, all right, it, it would appear to be a fumble, and I'm not 100%, but it appeared to be a fumble. Field position changes for Houston now. Instead of having the ball out here near midfield, chances are the ball will be inside the 20-yard line when they take over. Derek Wash is going to punt it away, and obviously he's going to try to keep it in the field of play. Voted, voted their special teams MVP. get it close was a pretty good punt but into the end zone 37 yards and a touchback it's nothing nothing in the first quarter and Houston's gonna have it for the second time when we come back every year about this time something magical happens the red tags come out for the Buick Pontiac GMC red tag event look for the red tag and your chance to get the best price of the season on 2008 Buick Pontiac and GMC models and the price on that tag is the price you pay during the red tag event choose 2,000 total cash back or 1.9 APR financing for 60 months on 2008 GMC Sierra crew cab hurry the red tag event ends January 2nd see your Buick Pontiac GMC dealer today way to follow your favorite team on the road at the best prices guaranteed go with Expedia the official travel sponsor of the NFL Expedia.com Expedia is sending 20 fans to Super Bowl 42 and 20 fans to the 2008 NFL Pro Bowl and two lucky fans will go to both register for your chance to win at Expedia winning team.com Headsets. Find all the stuff you need for all the stuff you got at your neighborhood Radio Shack. Do stuff. The Texas Bowl on NFL Network is brought to you by Radio Shack, where this holiday season, you don't just buy stuff, you do stuff. Expedia, now the official travel sponsor of the NFL. Expedia, go with confidence. Houston's going to have the ball at the 20, but uh, they might have had it at the 32 had this fumble or not been reviewed. It looks like Phillip Hunt, number 53, gets in and punches it right there, strips it. The ball's out before Fontenot even made the hit. It's recovered by Fontenot. Now, that ball should have been ruled fumble right there as opposed to a punt and then the 20-yard line. So, Charles, your point, it was a great one, field position. H hidden yardage. You know, right now, starting at 20, yep. happy to have it, but boy. 
Could have been up there. A little bit farther. And they've really got Allridge boxed in. A great job done first by Chase Ortiz. Great call. He isn't going to get credit for the tackle. He won't even get credit for the assist. Watch Chase Ortiz right here, OK? Ortiz is the guy that forces the cut right there. Forces the cut out wide. Now where's your help? Here comes Brian Bonner. Great job by Ortiz forcing the bounce outside to your secondary tackle. Being able to spill plays to the proper places is a big part of playing defense. You may not make the tackle, as you pointed out, Mike, but you cause your overall defense to be better. Second and 10. Keenum very calm in the pocket, but the outstanding pursuit by Bonner to run down Perry McDaniel before he could get more than a couple of yards. McDaniel's their underneath the guy. He runs a lot of crosses, runs a lot of whip routes, not a real fast guy, quicker than fast. Bonner all over him in man coverage, but a very accurate pass by Keenum. And now third down and seven. Mike, when we get a chance, I want you to talk him some more about Bonner because I got a feeling you're going to be looking at him later on as, as well as he runs, especially as a pump return at the next level. Always just split out wide to the right. Tatum's got a first down. Let me tell you, his poise, watch his feet back there in the pocket. He is not excited when nothing's happening for him right away. And part of what helps is this part of the field is open for him. You know why? Because they went five wide receivers, no one in the backfield, so it forced the defense to spread out and adjust. You didn't have anyone who could stay in the middle of the field and quote unquote spy on Case Keenum. He became the unaccounted for runner and he ran for a first down. And he's quicker than that defensive tackle trying to chase him down. Corey Grant forces Robert Henson to make the play down the field. 12 yard run for Keenum. First down at the 35. This is Khan just into the game. Andre Khan, a redshirt freshman from Jacksonville, Florida, number six. 39 is Jason Phillips, the leading tackler for TCU. There he is. Phillips, a tough kid. Remember, they're a 4 2 5 alignment. He's one of the inside linebackers along with David Hawthorne. Tough kid, leading tackler, all Mountain West Conference second team, had 77 tackles and an interception. Scoreless, nearing the middle of the first quarter, second down. Five and a half for Houston. Allridge breaking a tackle. But Charles, they're finding him. They are swarming to 22. Obviously part of your game plan. You can't look at Houston's numbers and not see 2 and 22 dominating them. Run game, pass game, doesn't matter. So what are you going to align your defense to do? Stop those guys. Every defense wants to take away the best things an offense can do. We're going to keep an eye on 2 and 22 in a big way. Raphael Priest alone at the top of your screen on Donnie Avery. There's a lot of speed out there. Houston Brad connects on 48% of third downs, which is ridiculous, and this is why it's only third and three. Keenum keeping on the option, and he's got another first down. Hawthorne with the tackle. And that's the play Gary Patterson was most concerned with option. They do it different a lot of different ways at Houston. This is just down the line option. He's attacking the end. Great cut, makes the play inside. Mark Matt Panfill can't get off the block in time. Cuts inside Bonner, first down. And Charles, the added dimension of athleticism at the quarterback position. Exactly right. And that was a great block at the point of attack against Panfield by number 87, Mark Hafner. He controlled Panfield on that play, allowed Keenum to get to the corner. First and 10. The Cougars have moved the ball from their 20. And there is a draw off a fake quick screen. And now the defensive starting lineup for TCU presented by Radio Shack, and it starts, as Mike told you earlier, with Ortiz and Blake at the ends. Griffin, a freshman, pressed into duty at the beginning of the season. Phillips, flanked by Hawthorne. Sanders, Priest, Roach, and Hodge. Roach is the guy to remember. He's all conference, and when they moved him to their free safety position in the middle of the year, their whole secondary seemed to align. Second and nine. 
Keenum just barely got rid of that football in time. You know, still, still absorbed the big hit, though, hit, from hit. David Hawthorne. He stayed in bounds and tried to deliver the pass. And Hawthorne says, as long as you're in bounds, I can, I can tag you. Absolutely. That's exactly what he does. Atypical of a, of, a, of a coach's son here, either get out of bounds or get, or rid, of it get rid of the ball. But you're in between there, you're going to get the hit. It doesn't matter who you're cheering for or if you're for neither team. When you see a young man holding the ball like that, in your head you're saying, get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. Exactly rid of it. right. Now it's third and long. TCU goes to an odd man front, a three man front, and they bring heavy blitz packages with zone schemes behind. And Keenum flushed out. And still going. <laughs> and there's a there's a uh, former coach now running the operation in Miami who would call that an indiscriminate <laughs> throw. And there was a flag at the end of the play right back there around Keenum. See, they're discussing now, I believe, a grounding call. I'm not sure the ball got past the, the line, line of scrimmage. scrimmage. He Even was outside the pocket. Exactly. But. I don't know. I thought it, well, we that's what they're discussing. Again. I thought yeah. it. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage in the attempt to dump the ball, intentionally grounding the ball. Number seven. Loss of down. It's a costly penalty because of the loss of down now. Mike, you called this, though. You said three-man front. They bring their blitz package with zone behind. They brought two right. and actually brought a third guy late. And the third guy, Phillips, is the guy who got the hit on Keenum and forced the incomplete pass. So your scouting report was dead on. <laughs> three-man front, two guys came, and then Phillips became the third guy when his guy didn't go out for a pass. But Chase Turner is going to punt it away to Brian Bonner. Bonner can make it exciting. Oh, oh, running into there's the flag. The player to make the reception. Bonner will make it exciting anyway. Look at this. Watch this here. This. I'm gonna run some more. Maybe we'll decline that penalty. I think that's <laughs> declined. <laughs> Tim Monroe looked like the player who ran into Bonner. You know what happens though, and I've been on punt teams, and what happens is when the contact occurs and you know as a coverage guy that there's a flag. You hesitate. You think the play's over. Brian Bonner Good did a great job. Interference on the kicking team. The penalty is declined. First down. 29 yard return by Bonner has set TCU up in a nothing nothing game, but good starting field position for the Horn Frogs. It has a six liter 48 valve V12.